Today we'll be talking about Quixel's Megascans trees. They announced just yesterday that they were going to release some trees into the marketplace and they talked a little bit about their workflow and as anyone that's used Megascans knows there was never really any trees. There was a few tree stumps and things like that and it was known for a while that they were working on this. So quite excited to dig in here and have a little look and see exactly what they've done with the trees. In order to find them you need to go into your marketplace and you need to go under the mega scans, so free mega scans, and you'll see trees here. You need to add it to your cart, even though it's free, and check it out. And once you have, you'll get it into your library. And I'm just going to search for tree in my library because there's a lot of stuff in there. And I'm going to add it to an existing project that I have. And the first thing we notice is it's quite large, uh, it's 8.6 gigabytes. And the project I'm adding it to is from this Unreal Sensei tutorial. It's the Unreal Engine Landscape Master material, which is a fantastic material set up by an incredible tutor. So let's just wait for this to add to the project. And we're almost there. A couple of things to note about this. It supports back from version 4.25 right up to 4.27. Doesn't look like there's any Unreal 5 support, but you could try to migrate it to a project. The other thing, of course, you could do here is you could start a new project altogether. You don't have to add it to an existing project. You could launch the engine, start a new project, and then add it to an empty project or a first or third person template. So I'm going to go right ahead here and launch the project we've added it to. Now all of this might take some time if it's your first time opening this asset. Um, usually what happens is that's compiled shaders and it can get stuck for quite some time depending on the specifics of your system. So it's a good time to go away for a coffee and just leave it to do what it does. Now if we go into the Black Alder folder and look in maps here, there's a map here that's ready to go. Now this can take some time to load up as well, so just be patient for the compiled shaders. And when we get in here, we can see that there's this level that's been set up for us, and everything that's kind of driving this is coming from this blueprint here. And if I press play here, there's no character in place, but everything seems to be moving pretty quick. I'm on a laptop. So what I'm probably gonna start with maybe is just to make a landscape. You don't have to do this part, but I'm gonna go into my landscape here. And um, because I'd already downloaded this Unreal Sensei material. I have a material here that I can put into my landscape when I create it. So I just went in there and click landscape and I'm just going to go with a basic setting here and just choose my mountain material which is downloaded by Unreal Sensei and just click create there. What I'll do is I'll go into paint here and just assign these materials and that should be all I need to do here. And I'm just going to go in here and do some quick sculpting. You can skip this if you want. Now I'm going to go back to the select mode here. And I'm just going to press F to focus back in on our level here. And temporarily hide this landscape and just get rid of some of the other stuff that's on this scene. So I'm going to get rid of this, these bases here. And this and the text. Just got rid of the lens, this backdrop by accident. And I'm going to leave the global, global foliage actor here and just get rid of some of this text by clicking on and just pressing delete. And what I can do here is go to the light source and press control L to rotate the position of it and the sky at the same time and just get an idea of the lighting we want in this scene. And I activate my landscape again and I'm going to put in some exponential height fog. Just searching fog in the place actors menu here. And, and dragging that into the scene. And changing some of the colours to black here in the in scattering. And the direction in scattering. And just change some of these settings to what you want for your scene. So I'm just going to adjust my player start as well. Just click it here and just move it up on the Z a little bit and then press play. The next thing we're going to do is put some of these trees into the foliage mode. So what I'll probably do is select the trees that are in here already, uh, the entire folder maybe, and just delete these for now. And next we'll go into 
foliage here and browse back into our black alder folder and into geometry and I'm going to go with simple wind here and maybe just choose all the forest meshes here again you can customize this to how you want I'm going to drop them in there and I'm going to make sure that I am in foliage mode here and paint is enabled and I've got my density set to 0 0.002 you can tweak that to what you want it to and I'm just going to get a slightly bigger size here and maybe zoom out a bit here and just put a few trees into this little valley that I've built so I'm just going to press play and that should be okay for what we're doing it's obviously it's not realistic we could paint some leaves under here do some painting of the landscape but I'm going to just do a little bit of a tweak on the light here make it a bit brighter and then I'm going to go ahead and see if I can connect this up to a blueprint to do some changes during runtime so if I just go back to the global foliage actor blueprint I'm just going to go in here and edit the blueprint and just have a look at some of these variables that we can access in class default and as you can see I've already mutated some of these from the default settings hence why my wind looks a bit strange and if we go in here and just have a look at some of these and adjust things like the season strength here we can start to see these leaves yellowing what I'm going to do next is see if I can access some of these from the level blueprint we're just going to do everything from the level blueprint so we go up to blueprint open level blueprint and I've got a little bit of script here that I'm going to delete and I'm just going to either grab that in there or whenever I have it clicked in the level I can right click and create a reference to it and I'm just going to add some input mappings here by going to edit project settings input and going to action mappings and pressing the plus key here and giving it a name like wind increase in this case and clicking here to give it a keyboard key so I'm going to use numeric keypad plus here for example and I'm going to go ahead and create one for wind decrease and one for season strength increase and season strength decrease that I've added here and assigned 0 and 9 to. The purpose of doing this in the input settings is we can actually call these in now from our blueprint should be want yeah so wind increase wind decrease season strength uh, is what we're going to try and get in from here and if I just right click here and go to wind increase I've got that now and right click again and I'm going to type in wind and it's going to find wind decrease for me so I've got these two in here already and the reference to my blueprint here and I'm going to grab this in here and go to wind here and what I'm looking for here is to set wind speed okay and the other one we'll do is we'll pull another one from here and we're going to type get wind here and we're going to get the wind speed so we're going to get that first and we're just going to add a value to it every time we press the key and from here I'm just going to pull up there and just do a plus plus and we're looking for increment float I'll put this in here so every time we press this it's going to increase this by one obviously you can change this value to a, a smaller increment or as I say a slider would be a far better way of doing this but I'm just going to show you how to do it via this method and so it's going to get the wind speed the existing wind speed which at present is set to 4.8327 and it's going to add one to it each time okay and um, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this bit of code here we don't need to plus we're going to copy that and throw that in there and plug these back in here so we have another one one of the final thing we need to do is here just put that in there and from this one we're going to do a minus minus so we're going to go in there and just do minus minus that's going to decrement it by one plug that in there plug that in here and plug that in there and the next thing we're going to want to do is just to print out what the wind speed number is so from there we can do a print string and in actual fact what we'll do is we'll do an append first which can alter what we put in that print string so if we put append we can actually type in here wind speed and then a space and put that in there what that should do is give us a wind speed and the number after it and throw that in here and then copy these nodes again and put them there we change that to an equal just think so it doesn't look like a negative we'll, we'll put equals there and the same here plus 
plug that in there and plug this one in here. So that should be all we need for this. Let's do a compile and enough something's wrong here. This one needs to come off of here, sorry. Got that wrong. And compile and save and then press play and see what happens here. So as soon as I press the plus, I'm increasing the wind speed. Making it go a little crazy there. When I press minus, I should be decreasing that wind speed now, okay? And I've still got my WASD keys to move me around. So that's us changing the wind speed during gameplay. I'll just quit out of that. And now I'm just going to go into the blueprint again here and go into class defaults and just change some of these settings back because I might have tweaked these earlier and start to work on the season strength here really. So I'm just going to set that to zero. Yours probably will be zero by default. Any changes you make here, compile and save. And then we will have a look at our level blueprint again and basically replicate everything we have for wind speed here and do a season strength so there's a not not a lot going on here but this is for the benefit of beginners all i've done here is got my code and added a comment to it just right click and add a comment there and the season strength and season decrease again are brought in from our inputs so we just right click here and look for season and it's there and we've done pretty much exactly the same thing here just a plus plus to add one to it you might want to make this a, a larger multiple uh, but this is okay for now and a minus minus to decrease and again a print string just to print the values out so we can compile save and press play and start to adapt some of these things in real time the wind strength and in fact we can go to negative here and now the season strength and we start to see these leaves changing season in real time so that's pretty cool stuff just to get started what i'm going to do right away is just to get working on a umg interface with some sliders and have a menu in game bring a character in and maybe just populate this landscape with lots more foliage and see what kind of performance hit it takes thank you very much for watching this very basic introduction to this new technology from quixel and i'm really looking forward to seeing what they've got planned for some other trees and foliage and in all it's an exciting move and thank you for watching the video if there's anything i can do better if there's anything you can contribute anything at all please comment please subscribe thank you very much cheers